Dr. Glover. I'm so <laughs> glad that I, uh, I'm i here again with uh, the opportunity to interview you and have you share your wisdom with my audience. Uh, before we start... What, what, what do you got there? What do you got in front of you? <laughs> the books you wrote. Uh, this is the main one, No More Mr. Yeah, nice Guy. Yeah, yeah, I got that one too. And then the next one that I really want to talk about also today is Dating Essentials for Men. I got that one too. <laughs> <laughs> I like your book selection. Okay. And then this was your newest one, The Big Stick. I got that one too. <laughs> you you missed one. I did? Dating Essentials for Men FAQ. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, there, 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 now you're up to date. <laughs> One more to add to my bucket list. So I thought today we would start out with the manosphere. And really, I realized that there are men in rural life and there are men in the manosphere and they're two different worlds. But I get a lot of comments from like manosphere type stuff. You know, they try to tell me I'm an old prude who hit the wall or, you know, they'd have an this old, body I... cat stuff or Meg Tau or nobody... Men have gone their own way. We don't need women. And I just was wondering, you know, if you might want to address any of the points that they make. Well, uh, you know, the manosphere is, a, I guess, a pretty big place because, you know, you probably got MGTOW, you got incels, you, you got red pill, you, you've you got pickup. There's, there's a whole whole lot of stuff out there. So, so people kind of identifying as manosphere, like, Post on your on your YouTube channel, or send you emails and tell you hurtful things about yourself. Or well, I mean, they leave really nasty comments. You know, everyone gets nasty comments. Um, but men in rural life never are nasty to me. It's just online guys. Well, yeah, they'll say that's I'm an uh, old that's... crude who's hit the wall, or uh, you know, something about body count. Nobody will ever want you. Or I've seen videos where. A woman's value is this high. A man has to make his value in life, but a woman's value is made, but she can lose it sure. by uh, getting older or having sex or anything like that. Like there's just a lot of men going their own way. We don't need women. Guys have comments like that. I don't need women anymore. I've given up on women. Women will take all your money in the divorce. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind yeah. of comments that they leave. Yeah. So, um, yeah, one thing about, uh, I guess let's talk about internet and social media in general. Um, you know, one thing that the social media and internet's done is is made us really all very impolite to each other. Mm -hmm. I don't mean we have to walk around, you know, being falsely polite, but r really probably a better way to say it is that people can be as rude and crass as they want to be, and it's totally anonymous. You know, they they... They can say people can say whatever they want to say. And for some reason, the internet just brings out the worst in people in that way. I mean, I, I remember one, a couple of weeks ago, I, I'd done a, a, an interview on a pretty popular uh, podcaster. And um, one of my coaches and friend of mine, uh, actually co writer of, of The Big Stick, said, Robert, how do you handle with how do you handle the criticism, the negative comments? I go, where? I, I kind of already knew what he said. he said. Well, like, you know, if you, if you like look under, you know, the, your interviews, you know, you know, a lot of people like you, but you know, there's people that say, I go, I don't read them. I just don't read them. I'm, I'm not on social media. I do not read it every now and then maybe about every five years, I'll go on Amazon and read my negative reviews. I won't even read the good ones. I'll just go read the, the negative ones almost. Well, sometimes there's actually some legitimate points that they make. But usually is somebody projecting their stuff. There's a lot of projection that goes on on the internet. And I if I I, I don't get a lot of hateful emails. I, I get a few, you know, maybe once every two or three months. So not a lot. And I, I have a folder in my email inbox called Jack Wagon folder. That's where the emails go, where somebody that they don't know me, they've not read my book. They just project something. Oh, I wrote a book called No More Mr. Nice Guy. I must be an asshole. And they'll write me an email telling me what an <laughs> asshole I am. Occasionally, I'll get an email from uh, a guy who says, you say in your book that a single mom can't raise a, a son. You know, he needs a man in his life. And you're an asshole. Okay. 
I remember another guy said, my father read your book and left my mother. You're an asshole. Yeah, um, and then, and, and they even kind of threatened bodily harm. I, I said, you threaten me again. I said, I know who you are. I've done my homework. I'll, I'll, you're going to have people knocking on your door. So I told him, you don't threaten me, right? You can call me an asshole, but you don't threaten me, right? Um, never heard back. And I said, and if you want to talk about my book, I'd be happy to talk with you. I gave him that off. We'll talk. Never took me up on it. Right. Um, sometimes people are just kind of, they're, they're angry in the moment. I'll get some emails from women that say, my husband or my boyfriend read your terrible book and he left me. And you know, usually the email's about this long, and I, I'm going, you know, run, Forrest, run, get as far away as you, you know. They, they, my book didn't make him leave. I, I'm thinking he probably should have left a long time ago. Um, and, and so don't go back, you know. So I, I do, but I don't get that many. And again, again, I, I'm, I have social media accounts, but I'm not on social media. I don't read what people say about me. I don't read comments in the interviews. Um, I don't, I don't need the praise to make me feel better. And I don't need the negative messages in my head either. So I, I just, I just don't put them there. And, uh, I'm, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy not knowing what people say about me on social media. It doesn't keep me awake at night. So I, I just don't really get into that now. But with that said, people feel free to say whatever they want to say. And in the meanest, most hurtful way. And, and, kind of what you're saying is kind of likened to, you know, why I liked dating in real life, meeting people in real life versus meeting them like on match.com when I, because on match.com, you know, all of a sudden now you have to be in a certain age bracket. You have to have, you know, man or woman, you know, certain income bracket, certain this, certain that for people to consider you, but you meet somebody in public real life. It's kind of like, do I click with that person or not? Right. It's, 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 it's real in real life. And, and, and we're going to usually treat, people with more respect in real life but when we get on mm -hmm. on the internet it's like that goes out the window and that that's too bad i i i hope that this is just a phase that we're going through that we're not getting meaner and uglier and nastier because we can um mm -hmm. i hope at some point people realize you know what i don't want to ingest that and they I, I'm a big fan of people getting off social media. I encourage, mm -hmm. especially I work with men a lot. I say, you know, get off social media. It feminizes you. It doesn't make you more productive. You're, you're in there looking for likes. You're looking at Instagram models. You're, you're reading that, you know, who, 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 you know, it's all, that's feminine. You're not, you're not putting a mm -hmm. dent in the universe when you're scrolling this or scrolling, right. Looking for, you know, what hotties right around the corner from you. And so I'll say the very minimum Take social media apps off your phone. You're probably going to get a lot of comments from people about this stuff too. Yeah, I say take the apps off your phone. At the very minimum, take Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp off your phone because those are all owned by Mark Zuckerberg who is committed to stealing every ounce of your data that he can. So at the very mm -hmm. minimum, only look at social media, especially anything owned by Meta, only look at it using like a Firefox browser or some browser that blocks tracking. Otherwise, mm -hmm. everywhere you go, every conversation you have is is being tracked and data taken that from people who, who want your data, who who become the world's richest guys because they sell your data. So not a fan of social media, not a fan of what it does to people, not a fan of how people get rich on it. But that's just me. That's just my opinions. You know, and mm -hmm. people will, I agree people, with you. People will attack me for those opinions. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't have anything anymore either. But with YouTube, I've gone back and forth because I I didn't read the comments for a long time, and then I thought I I'm that's very entitled of me to have this YouTube channel and talk and expect people to listen. And I don't read their comments. Some yeah. of the comments are really good. They give me ideas yeah. for videos and let me yeah. know what people are thinking. But then a lot of them are just uh, inappropriate, so I have to kind of like guard myself. But I don't have to read them. That's where I come across them. On my Twitter, um, only people I follow can reply. I use that yeah. for other things. Right. Um, but I don't, uh, I agree with you that it's bad. And I agree that the men that watch a lot of this manosphere stuff, it makes them really um, big crybabies and victims and removes them from real life because they'll say things like, oh, you got to be six foot tall to get a woman. And I'm like, do you ever leave the house? Because I do leave the house. And I see all kinds of like very unattractive men with women who are just like 
Go looking figure. at them so adoringly, like it's just two different worlds. Yeah. Here, you know, here's here's the other reality of life. Besides the fact that the internet lets us express whatever venom we have, we've all been hurt. We've all been hurt. Everybody's gotten hurt in life. We, we got hurt as little children. Um, if we got left or abandoned or teased or bullied, uh, rejected, got a bad grade, didn't get picked you know, to play on the softball team. We've all been hurt. We got to junior high. The boys didn't know how to talk to the girls. The girls didn't know how to talk to the boys. We got to junior high. You know, the boys had weird feelings like, how come I'm attracted to other boys? The girls had feelings, how come I'm attracted to girls? People had feelings, how come I don't, I'm a girl, but I don't feel like a girl. You know, we've got everybody has has stuff and and everybody's been lied to everybody's maybe been taken advantage of in some way everybody's been betrayed in some way most of us to get it to adulthood you've been hurt especially when it comes to close or intimate relationships maybe you got hurt because you were an unattractive girl or a socially inept guy and you didn't know how to talk to the the opposite sex and so because they didn't talk to you back you felt worthless. That hurts. Now, what happens? Here, here's just a fact in life. We can be victimized without becoming victims. We we can have terrible shit happen to us. People can be hurtful. They can be mean. They can bully us. They can abuse us. They they can ghost us. They can shame us. They can, you know, all these things can happen without us going into a victim place but it's easy to go into the victim place it's easy to say you know it's, it's a poor me it's a pity party you know they're bad they're evil and i was a victim i'm a victim men do it women do it hashtag me too was was you know some of it was legit a lot of it's just women let me be a victim too me too me too i want to be a victim and now the guys are out there. I'm a victim. I'm I'm a you know MGTOW. I'm incel. It's not my fault that you know women won't have sex with me, and mm -hmm. and so we're projecting all of this outside. Now, actually, that's also a very feminine way to be, and that's why it's not particularly attractive on men. Is that to say I'm a victim of of you know all these things happening outside of me? Because again, the masculine takes action. The masculine mm -hmm. is masterful and proactive. The feminine is done to for good. And for bad, the feminine part of us does get victimized. But if we stay in that feminine, that I'll call it lower feminine, you know, I, everybody's evil, women are evil, men are evil, Jews are evil, blacks are evil, whites are evil, you know, patriarchs evil, you know, all of a sudden, everybody's walking around feeling like a big fucking victim and nobody's happy having a good life or getting their needs met or getting what they want, which mm -hmm. let's take that back then to the manosphere. I'm a big believer, and you know this about me, I'm a big believer that men need community. I talk about all the time. You know, I, I you know, I wear my shirts, you know, with the, the program I started for men, Integration mm -hmm. Nation. I'm a big fan that, that, that men need community. Now, I, I would hope that that community is, is conscious, open-hearted, you know, purposeful, powerful, encouraging men to level up and be their best selves. But because there's not a lot of positive community out there, men will go find any community where they feel like they can belong. It, it mm -hmm. might be white supremacist. It might be red pill. It might be MGTOW. It might be incel. It, it can be anything that feels like I belong here because I'm pissed off at the same people the other people are pissed off at. Mm -hmm. Now, again, for women, that might have been hashtag me too at one time. We're community. We've all been abused. You know, we get to join together. It, it might LGBTQ keep adding more letters to that. You know, <laughs> we've felt left out. Let's add more. You know, let's, we, we can be inclusive, you know, and pretty soon there's going to be so many letters. Nobody's left out of the LGBTQ letter after letter. Uh, so, but we need to belong. That's my main point. I'm not trying to like, you know, attack any grouping other than often we go belong by what we feel victimized by. And then we're now in an echo chamber. And that's one reason I don't like social media either. It's a big echo chamber. If mm -hmm. you look at anything, if you do, you know, if you, you go to anything on any social media, it could be YouTube. YouTube is about the only, the only thing that I look at. But if I watch, you know, uh, a David Gilmore, Pink Floyd live, 
you know, clip of a song. All of a sudden, I'm bombarded with David Gilmore, you know, Pink Floyd, you know, live song clips. You know, you look at one Jordan Peterson clip, you're bombarded. I think Jordan Peterson must do nothing but do interviews 24 seven because he's all over YouTube, you know, and, you know, I, I like watching them, but then, you know, after a while, it's just, that's all that I get in YouTube is David Gilmore and Jordan Peterson. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, they all have algorithms and face anything. Meta is the absolute worst at that. And that's why it's caused problems around the world with, you know, the, the, the false news during elections, during COVID, during Brexit is fueled, um, uh, ethnic cleansing in countries around the world because that that echo chamber you look at one thing you hear one thing now you're bombarded with it that now seems true because that's mm -hmm. all the information you're getting is confirmation bias is that you believe uh, i'm a guy i believe it's women's fault that i've never had sex and now all of a sudden i'm on social media i'm on these online forums and everything i see say is women's mm -hmm. fault that, that men don't have sex that's truth right it's the echo chamber which which is what victim people when they go in these victim groups they just keep amplifying and adding to all the proof of of our belief and and you know it can be all the way from pro vaccination anti vaccination you know any anything you want to do you can go find a group that you get bombarded with that information and now you have this confidence I'm right I'm right. Oh yeah, and the algorithm only shows you what you're searching for, so exactly. you think that's all there is. It, 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 that that must be all this on Facebook is you know every anti-vax thing that I oh and I you know the vaccinations must be bad because that's all I see, and you yeah. can go the other direction. Eat, no matter what it is, those algorithms are set up to keep pumping you the same thing you've already looked at. So if you're you know Midtown Med going their own way because you know you know I promise you. I, I've I've understood men going their own way. I've thought, yeah, I'm going to go join that club. I've had enough of women, right? I've felt that way before. I've been married three times. You know, I've had plenty of relationships, and there's been times with, uh, I, no more women. You know, my, my 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 wife will say, you know, maybe maybe you know you should find a woman who's different than me in some way. You know, taller, younger, more educated. I go, listen, you're 22 years younger than me. I go much younger than you. I'm, you know, I, I, I get down to the stupid age. You know, I, I don't want that, right? <laughs> so uh, you won't hear that on, on Red Pill, though. They'll go, yeah, go younger, go younger, go younger. Uh, you know that. So my wife says, you know, so when, you know, you know, when, after me, you know, your next, I go, no, there's not going to be a next. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've, I've had enough women in my life. You know, I've got enough good women, you know, my, my, my stepdaughter, my granddaughter, my mother, my pit bull, you know, I've got enough. I don't need any more. <laughs> so I, I can relate. I've been hurt by women. I've let women hurt me. I've set myself up to be hurt by women. I've let them hurt me over and over and over again because I didn't set a boundary or didn't remove myself. Is that their fault or my fault? Well, I guess I got to own it because I'm the common denominator. I put myself in situations where I let people hurt me or treat me badly. And even just the fact that men and women are different and society says, oh, we should be able to be the same. We should be able to live in the same house and want the same things and, you know, desire the same things and see the world the same way. We don't. We don't. But then that we start getting hurt by those differences. OK, the mm -hmm. truth is sometimes it's just because we're different. We just want different things. That's OK. So I've been hurt. I, I can understand the men, the the incels that say it's not my fault. I've never been laid. You know, when I was a younger guy, I I didn't know how to engage with a woman and even say yes to I think there were plenty of women who wanted to have sex with me when I was younger, but I was too scared. I, I grew up in fundamental Christian church. I thought it was evil. I thought it was bad. I was monogamous to my mother. I I I just, you know, I had all this baggage. I had vagophobia. I avoided sexual opportunity you know i, I talk about like? vagophobia, vagophobia? I, I talk about that in no more mr nice guy um <laughs> i i i avoided you know open vaginas you know freud said that vaginas scare men because they can give us an erection and they can take it away mm. i think he i think he even said vaginas have teeth in them i think that's why men <laughs> are, are scared of them but you know men have been you know afraid of these things forever and we've been blaming people forever. Now we got the red pill, the, this part of the mix as well. And what I dislike 
most about red pill. I've spoken at red pill conventions, you know, lots of good people. But again, men are searching. We're searching for answers. We're searching for community. And we'll, we'll find whatever's out there, whether it's Andrew Tate or red pill, we'll find what's ever out there. Right. And so in the red pill, what I don't like is the, the hierarchies that they create and the us against them. You know, it's like the women are all evolutionarily programmed to be hypergamous. That means they're going to come take whatever a guy has. And then as soon as they've taken everything he has to give, they're going to, you know, level up to the next guy and take everything he has and go up to the next guy. And they, they, they write about hypergamy just like it's this scientifically established fact. It's not. It's something that somebody pulled out of their ass and they wrote about it enough times and said, women are evolutionarily wired to do this. Now, we are evolutionarily wired to do a lot of things. And I think women do have uh, some evolutionary drive towards security. Just a, and that, that, that might even just be emotional security, not even necessarily you know, physical security, but that's often included. But, you know, the, 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 the proof that hypergamy doesn't list is that women get with losers and stay with losers all the time. They get with poor guys. They get with addicts. They get with drunks. They, they get with guys in prison. They get with drug dealers. They get with losers all the time. So if hypergamy existed, why aren't they all trading up? And as soon as soon after a while, they're all going to reach a glass ceiling that, you know, that all the women have traded up to all the guys that have anything left because the women have taken it all from them. Right. <laughs> but all that usually is, is some guy got burned in a divorce. And so that's all women are doing is they're out to take men for all their worth. I do say that women's math skills go to hell when they get divorced because 50 50 takes on really weird proportions and the courts kind of, you know, do, you know, foster that. Um, and, and a lot of men have gotten burned. A lot of women have gone out and gotten their hired gun, an attorney, and, and painted an evil picture of the man, taken his kids away from him, and, and yet he still has to pay her at the standard of living she was accustomed to, even though she left him for another guy. And, mm -hmm. and so men have been hurt and burned. Like I said, we've all been hurt. We have been cheated on. We have been lied to. But then when we go form these clubs to just say, they're all evil. They're all that way. They all do that. No, they don't. So They you know, don't all do that. No, that's not true because all the women I know who got divorced, they didn't get any money because they made as much as the men. And and so, again, we, we're going to tell it from our own point of view. Mm -hmm. Neither of my ex-wives took me to the cleaners either. I, I, I got no bitterness about it. Um, was there some unfairnesses? Yeah. Did I... Um, they, they say statistically... After divorce, most women for about five years are ahead financially than the man. But after about five years, the man passes them up and leaves them behind. Mm. So is there some very real injustices? Yeah, I, I, I know there are. And for anything, we even if we did get victimized, if we go start playing the victim, now we're going to project all of that onto all of them and we're never going to get what we want. The truth is we wouldn't be bitter. So let's say us guys, let's say whether it's MGTOW, incel, red pill, we wouldn't be bitter if we didn't actually want the women in our life. Oh, that's a, you make a good point. Why, you know, if why, they keep talking about not wanting women, so there's something there, right? Like a shadow thing or something? Yeah, it's kind of like, <laughs> maybe this isn't a good analogy, but like I, I'll give the illustration. When I was dating, again, my late 40s and 50s, and and I, I, I'd i go really slow before I'd make any kind of sexual commitment to a woman. And so I was dating around and sleeping around. But I, I'd let women know that up front. Even without me bringing it up, more than one woman would say something like, I just want you to know I don't have sex with anybody unless it's within a committed relationship. And I go, okay, but I'm going to let you know that why would I commit to somebody that I haven't had sex with? That doesn't make any <laughs> kind of sense. And I go, when we have sex later on, I'm going to assume you changed your mind. Don't assume I changed mine. And they all had sex with me later on because they would not have brought it up if they weren't already thinking about sex, right? If they weren't already thinking about fucking me, they wouldn't have told me they're not going to fuck me unless we're in a committed relationship, right? So the point is, all these, all the guys that are going, I don't need women. You know, it's women's fault that, you know, I'm not, I've never gotten laid. You know, it's women's fault I got taken. All that bitterness, actually, I think it's a sign often that we really do 
want the women in our life. Now, I teach men, hopefully, how to do that in a way that's more conscious so that we, we do have boundaries relationships. We do have realistic expectations of what a partner can give to us, not these unrealistic expectations. We, we do overcome, I'll, I'll bring up another subject here. We, we, we men have this, this thing about us. We confuse a dopamine hit to the brain with a belief of how good of a partner or sex partner a woman might be. And what I mean by that is that, and, th and this is probably related to, you know, when men make comments about your age, the male brain, when it sees a, a young fit female is going to have a dopamine hit to the brain, mother nature that is wired into the brain by mother nature. Men confuse that dopamine hit, which we just feel as just a warm, good feeling. Yes, it's what a you know, woman feels a warm, good feeling when they're aroused. And then we go, I want more of that feeling. The mistake men make, because we're not always real bright about this, is we think that warm feeling that a young, fit, or attractive woman gives us, a sexy young woman, we think that dopamine hit is proof she'd be a good girlfriend, is proof she'll be good in bed. In my experience, it's often the opposite. The, 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 the ones that we our brains are going bing, 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 bing for are the very worst girlfriends and, and often very the worst in bed. But, but men, until you've been through it, or been taught better. And I'm not sure we can even, I can even teach men better. I think you just have to go through it to realize that we co-create a lot of the problematic situations we get into because we get a dopamine hit to the brain by some, you know, young, attractive woman. We find a way to make her our girlfriend come to find out she's batshit crazy. She can't tell the truth. She can't pay her own bills. You know, she can't be faithful. You know, she she's has a mood disorder. And then we, you know, we go through all of that. And then because she was that way, all women are that way. And we think, mm -hmm. well, but the, the, the problem was, wait a minute. Maybe if you didn't let the dopamine hits to your brain guide your relationship decisions, you might have come out of that better. The first time she mm -hmm. acted badly or lied to you or hurt or treated you badly or couldn't be trusted or, or, you know, disappeared on you. Maybe you said not good girlfriend material, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe crazy enough to be good sex material, but you know, not good enough to be good. And you would have had a boundary. You would have removed yourself, but because she gave you dopamine hits to the brain, you stayed in there and you kept putting up with bad behavior. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden it's her fault. Yeah, because guys, uh, when I've asked guys before, yeah, this woman, why were you with her so long? And they'll be like, she was so hot. Yeah, yeah. She gave me so a dopamine. <laughs> she boosted my ego. I've been there. I don't, I don't blame guys. My second wife was so hot. Everybody that met her goes, it's kind of, they're always kind of surprised. Is that your wife? Go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, that's your, that's yours. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and they go, everybody's like, she's gorgeous. And I go, yeah, she is. And I let her treat me badly for 14 years because I liked that people thinking my wife was gorgeous. Now, how intelligent is that? Not very, but am I going to go form a club now and be bitter at, at all women because I let that woman treat me badly? No, I'm grateful as hell for that woman. Because of her, I wrote a book. Because of her, mm -hmm. you and I are talking to each other. Because of her, I'm changing the world. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. She was a big stick upside my head that woke me up mm. and said, don't let women treat you badly. Doesn't mean I have to hate all women, but I don't have to let them treat me badly either. And there's a big difference between that. Yeah, it sounds like you really made a lot of changes in your life from, you know, how you were saying your childhood was, I think, and how women treated you badly. And like you made this big change and it's a big change to change ourselves and to go from being a victim to being like a hero of our own lives. Right. Um, I wanted to ask you about single men, but if you want to say anything about like how you, you know, like how you transformed yourself, you must've really wanted it. I don't think everybody can do that because it's hard to change ourselves. It's hard to change our diet or exercise yeah. plan or sleep yeah. schedule. It's hard to see our own bad thoughts. It's yeah. hard to see where we're going wrong. Like we're just blind spotted to ourselves. And then to change it seem um, like, do you have like a couple pointers on how people <laughs> Yeah, let me, you know. let me I I would I would be wealthy beyond measure if I, if I had an answer <laughs> to that. 
here's the thing. Yeah, I, I'm a therapist by training. So, you know, I, I've been trained to help people change, right? And that's that's how I make my living is helping people, you know, find the areas of their life that aren't serving them, that aren't working well and, and make changes so that they can get what they want in their life. And yeah, I've had to do that myself. Um, I've gone to a lot of therapy. I've been in men's programs. I've been in men's groups. I've done a lot of writing, a lot of self-evaluation, uh, you know, meditation. I've just done a lot of things to both become more aware and introspective and empowered. Uh, you know, let's use that word, empowered. Most of the people who send you negative messages, hurtful things, get in, in online groups where they're victims, do not feel empowered. Now, they get a false sense of power through all the mm -hmm. negativity, but but it's not true power. True power is where you can actually make the changes in your life that set you up to get what you want. And that mm -hmm. usually doesn't come by vilifying somebody else. It usually comes by just not hanging out with the people who don't treat you well or who you don't enjoy being with. And I don't. Over the years, I've removed myself from a number of people who didn't treat me well. Uh, I have a one. I have many mantras that kind of guide my life. One of them is sometimes you have to give up the things you love to get the things you want. I loved my second wife, but I wanted to be treated well and respected by the woman in my life. So I had to leave something I loved to get something I wanted. And so I did. And so that's hard to do. Most of us don't want to leave the things we love. We want the things that aren't doing, that aren't being what we want them to be. We want them to change. I, I live most of my life that way. We're just waiting. Well, she'll change. She'll change. You know, she'll, she'll, you know, want more sex. She'll quit treating me badly. She'll quit doing this. She'll, you she'll know, see the light. <laughs> she'll see the light. She'll see how great I am. You know, they don't, people don't typically change. So, you know, I, I tell guys when, the, when they're dating, you meet a woman, if she's having problems making her car payment, if she's going through a rough patch with her mother, if she can't seem to hold a job, if she's going through depression, if she's got eating issues, how you find them is how they are. They're not going to change. You're not going to get them better just because you shower a lot of love on them and, and give them and make their car payment for them and listen to them talk about how badly their mother still treats them. That's not going to change them. I'm, I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. Mm -hmm. I'm a bigger fan of me living life on my terms. And the people who are drawn to the way I live my life and want to hang out with me, get to hang out with me if they treat me well. Mm -hmm. If they're not drawn to my life, great. That's why I don't, again, why I don't read people's comments on social media. If they're not drawn to what I do, why why would I care? If they were a stranger on the street who walked up to me and said, you know, you're a worthless piece of shit. I'd go, you don't even know me. Why, why would I care what you think about me? But we care because they posted it online, right? Yeah. So, I just don't hang out with people who don't like me and treat me well. I just don't. And so that was a big change. Yeah, I had to work at that. So what I had to do is I had to cut the people out of my life who didn't like me and treat me well, even if they claimed to love me, I had to cut mm -hmm. them out. And I started slowly putting people in my life who did like me and who do treat me well and who do like to spend time with me. And while we are spending time, we enjoy each other's company and we both mm -hmm. feel blessed by the experience. I began filling my life with those people. And that took work. And I didn't find those people in groups. They gathered together to be victims and be negative. I found <laughs> those people um, in coffee shops, you know, on public transportation, in groups where people gathered to be their best selves. That's where I found those kind of people. And so, again, that's why I'm not a big, even though I, I love the men in the manosphere, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of what the manosphere preaches and does to them. And, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to so many men, for example, that kind of go through that phase because they're hurting mm -hmm. and they, they, they go looking and that's what they find. First off, it might be red mm -hmm. pill, might be MGDAL, might be incels, might be, you know, any number of things. And sometimes they, they get, you know, some information that's helpful to them because they're in, in most of those groups, there is some helpful information, right? They get a little bit, they're kind of drawn to it. They go deeper, they go deeper. And all of a sudden they go, 
I don't feel good. And this is starting to sound the same kind of thing over and over and over again, that there's nothing really new. They're just kind of, yeah, hypergamy, 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 you know, dread game, dread game, dread game, dread game. You know, you know, w w women's value going down, man being high value, man, you can get a lot of high value women. High value woman is, is code word for young and hot. It has nothing to do with she intelligent, generous, honest, caring. That's not high value to, to the people. High value is young and hot because it boosts the ego. And so young and hot and uh, a virgin, preferably. Oh, really? Is that a big deal, too? Well, not a virgin, but they say uh, this is another one. It has to do with body count. A woman's value declines with her body count because she, is that what that it means used to be okay. that they shamed women for being like dirty little sluts. But now it's taken a different tack. It's the uh, she can't pair bond. And again, it's just something that somebody made up. It, it is because, you know, here's the deal. I'll, I'll tell you a little, a little story. Um, I teach a course called Positive Emotional Tension. And I first put this out as a written course, and then I taught it, you know, and had, had, had forums for it. And um, the, the basic theme of, of PET, as I call it, is that women have to experience emotional tension to be attracted to a man, be sexually aroused by him, and stay attached to him over time. They, 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 just, they just need something. They got to feel something. It's got to be that emotional yeah. tension. Mm -hmm. The problem with this equation is most men do not like emotional tension. You know, most, mm -hmm. most, most of men's emotional tension has a clock on it, whether it's, you know, uh, a, a hero movie, a sporting event. Yeah, they've even put a clock on baseball now, right? And so there's clocks on men's emotional tension because we just can't take it for very long. We want to just get everything resolved, back to good, kick back my feet, have a beer, smoke a joint, play a video game, watch Sports Center, whatever it is. We don't want to be bugged, right? But women like being bugged and they like bugging the person they're in relationship with they you like the drama you like the tension you like the unexpected you like the unknown and there's so many things that can create emotional tension for you. even the bad boys can create emotional tensions you know they're bad for you you know he's already slept with your girlfriend twice and stolen money from you and he's a drug addict but oh he creates emotional tension right so a lot of women's romance novels chick flicks are all about uh, emotional tension okay so here's the story when I taught this course to men, you know, men, of course, want to turn this into a technique because that's what you learn to do on the Internet and on YouTube and, and pick up boot camps. Everything's a technique. You know, dread games, a technique. Keep a woman dreading that you're going to leave her, you know, neg her, you know, make her feel bad about herself. So she works to get your approval. That's a technique. You know, men love techniques because maybe we're just not socially skilled enough to just have an interaction with a woman and be smart enough to create the kind of emotional tension that, you know, lights her up and makes her tingle down there and goes, I want more. So I, I would teach men, you know, what makes women tick in terms of that arousal and that attraction. And I say, never be boring. Because the, the feminine is not attracted to boring mm -hmm. or, or no, you know, the average boring. guy can get up and wear the same pair of pants every day for weeks at a time. Average woman get up. She can't wear the same outfit for a few months. And at least if she wears it again, she's got to accessorize it differently. It can't be boring. Right. So that's just a difference. OK, here's the, but the story of it. When I taught that just as a, a written course, men loved it is my highest selling course. Then I turned all my courses into video courses and, and kind of added content. And one of the things I added to the content in the PET course was some, some videos on um, the sexual evolution of women. And that I say that women by nature are sexual Ferraris. You can have sex with multiple men, have multiple orgasms. You have parts on your, your body that serve no other purpose than getting you aroused and giving you orgasms. Men have two parts on their body penis and maybe their prostate women women can think themselves into orgasms when i've had dated women i could lick their nipples they'd have orgasms touch a woman some women touch their ass they have orgasms g-spots you know uh, uh clitoris orgasms um uh the, the vulva uh, no the um uterus orgasms women are just highly wired sexual creatures men are sexual mopeds we evolved that we can just stick our dick in a hole and ejaculate. We think that's good sex, right? But then we created this meme that women don't like sex, don't want sex. But if women don't like sex and don't want sex, 
Why did we create religion to control their sexuality? Why did we stone them if they're not virgins? Why do we put scarlet letters on their head? Why do we wrap them in burkas? Why do we put them in chastity belts? Why do we slut shame them even to this day if they don't fucking like sex, right? The truth is women are so highly sexual, it scares the bejeebers out of us men. That's why we create religions to control their sexuality and stone them if they're not virgins and wrap them in burqas and put them in chastity belts and, mm -hmm. and slut shame them. Actually, it's usually the women that slut shame each other more than the men do because women are going, she's cheating. She's going to get more attention than me. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> while they're wearing their own mini skirt and getting their own boob implants, right? So, but, but when I created this video course, about women being these highly tuned sexual sports cars, Ferraris, and men are just sexual mopeds. Once I put that in the video and added that information, that course, I get more requests for refunds on that course than any other course. And I always ask the guys why. Oh, it just isn't for me. Or it just, you know, wasn't what I was looking for. Or it just wasn't. And I know what it is. It is as it scares the living bejeebers out of men because it always has. From the day we quit being tribal and communal where every man had access to every woman and every woman had access to every man, and we men created patriarchy and started owning one vagina, and now we thought, well, that we can't make that vagina happy. That vagina is going to want other penises in it because that is what Mother Nature prefers. We had to start trying to control female sexuality. Why? We can't keep up with it. So now we do things like body counts. Oh, how many, you know, how many penises you've had in your vagina and all of a sudden you're bad. No, you're just doing what you were built to do. You know, I, I, I give guys, guys, guys don't want to believe that women are highly sexual. And if I prove to them, they are, they want their money back. Guys just oh, are scared of female okay. sexuality. So here's, here's one example I give guys. All right. I take a guy to a hotel, nice hotel. We bring a hundred, a hundred high quality women into the room, right? You know, young, hot, sexy with young low body hot. counts, young and hot, you know, young and hot, that's high quality, you know? And, and we say, all right, you get to pick 10 of these women and you have to ejaculate inside these 10 women. And I ask guys, how long do you think it'll take you to do that? Now, most men highly underestimate their refractory period and highly overestimate their, their horniness, right? So a guy, a young guy, might can do probably two or three in a couple hours, come two or three times. A guy my age, no. Uh, a middle-aged guy, you know, maybe gets one or two knocked out. Third one's harder. Fourth one is like, oh man, I got to get a good night's sleep. Fifth one, I'm dreading. Six is kind of why the fuck that I even agree to this. Most men can't make it to 10. Because the refractory period, the more times they ejaculate, that refractory period gets longer and longer. It's a hormonal thing. Mm -hmm. They just got nothing left. They're spent. Okay. Most men would take at least a week or more or two to get through 10 women. And even the young men. Okay. Put a woman in a nice hotel, 100 just good looking, high quality men, right? And she can pick 10 of them. How long will it take her to orgasm? with 10 men of her choice. Some women can do it in an hour, two hours for a woman who knows her body well, okay? They can get it done. Why? Because you're wired different. You are wired to, to have multiple sexual partners in a short amount of time. Mother Nature wanted that. She wanted to have a lot of different sperm competing with each other to get to your, your valuable egg and the best sperm's gonna win. But for the best sperm to win, there's gotta be a competition. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's just mother nature now all of a sudden we're shaming you because you are more highly set we all think oh men are men have such high, high sex drives no we don't not compared to a woman who's comfortable in her body and likes sex there's nothing like a woman's sex drive i mean my wife <laughs> you know she would pester me daily and and then not just for sex once a day my wife would be happy to have sex three times a day and and still come back for more okay that's she's just highly sexually wired me oh come on we did it yesterday you know <laughs> well, um, i mine. just want to say just for the audience if they don't know about the sperm competition because i was just recently reading about that is that the the human penis is shaped with that mushroom head so that when 
uh, the, he's thrusting inside the woman, that actually acts as a vacuum to pump out the sperm of the preceding male. And there's also um, uh, a coagulant that forms a plug around the cervix so that the next guy's sperm can get in. And there's also something in there that will, I think, try to liquefy the sperm that's already in there, which is the sperm competition wow. theory. Yeah. And, right? and, you As know, opposed to the primate, like the gorilla, where they compete for women on the basis of their size. But yeah, yeah so that's that's how we were designed. But um, but now we're living in a society where, you know, we're not in a tribal society. And the only thing that I have to say with the body count thing where they could have a point is um, how will they know? I guess how would a woman know that her husband isn't cheating? But they think... They probably think I can't keep up with her. They they're very threatened by woman's sexuality. First you, of all, they're you know of that it. firsthand, right? You know that. Yeah, I just made a tweet about it the other day on my Twitter, which is under my um, stage name for my um, other business. But I came to the realization because I'm reading a book about religion and sex that they're really afraid of our sexuality. And it's a way to control women. But also, I think they're um, thinking, how will I know if she's so sexual that she's not cheating on me? But the big thing these guys have to realize is that they are really, every woman's going to pick up on their fear of her sexuality. So these women can never be sexually free with these guys. Because yeah. deep down, you know that they're disapproving of a woman's sexuality and so these women will always have to be sexually re repressed. I agree. I agree. Around I've seen these that. guys. I've, I, I experienced that because of my own, like I said, my own vagophobia, my own fear of sexuality. I know that probably I repressed the women around me to, to, to lower their sexual intensity because that, you know, women are sensitive. They don't want to. They don't want the guy to feel intimidated. And most women yeah. don't want to feel like they're so overwhelming and so threatening either. So right. women have been culturized to lower their sexual threshold. I think right. so. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And we and like when I was married, I didn't want my husband to disrespect me. And because I, I was raised during the 60s, not the free love 60s, but more like the women should be wait till marriage kind of 60s. Okay. So I was trying to keep it all kind of down because I didn't want my husband to disrespect me. You know, all, all and, of, all but I was aware of that. I was aware of that. And I think those are the kind of attitudes that men, these men are giving to women. But also, I think they might think, well, if she's uh, sleeping around that much, how do I know that she's not going to get bored of me or cheat on me? Well, of course, the, that 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 goes back to, you know, why we invented the burkas and chastity belts and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's that male insecurity. Now, part of it comes in, to with okay am am i going to raise you know you know some other neighbor who stuck his dick in my my property's vagina now I've, i'm raising his offspring using my scarce resources that's kind of been a whole part of this theory for a long time and and probably it has some validity but i think it's just still a male excuse mm -hmm. the male excuse is as long as we're trying to harness a sexual ferrari I mean, we've tried, we've tried our damnedest. I mean, look at all the things we do and yet we're still terrified of you uh, with all the work we put in. To, and, and then now we're going, we have to create a female, uh, 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 <laughs> the word slipped my mind. Um, the male little blue pill that men take. Um, Viagra? Viagra, female Viagra to get women to be sexual. No, you don't. Let's Let's just not abuse them when they're little girls. Let's not slut shame them when they're adolescents and young adults. Let's let them be, you know, the, the beautiful sexual creatures that they are. And let's men grow up, right? Let's grow up and deal with our fragile egos that we want mommy to love us and only love us. And mommy only loved us and never loved anybody before us. That's all that is, is fragile mommy issues that men project on women. I have so many men. That, that, that come to my workshops or back when I was doing groups and therapy. And, you know, they say it's this thing like it's a guy that's maybe had sex with one or two or three women. And he's met a girlfriend who is amazing in every way. They love her. She's great. But 
she's had multiple sex partners. You know, she's had a dozen boyfriends before him, maybe. And, you know, however, however many just one night stands even. And, and maybe, you know, whether she's given him all the details or just enough, he knows that she's ahead of him. Then the guys will often, I've, I've seen guys get mean about this. Well, I should go out and sleep with X number of women just to catch up with her to make it even. So she'll know how it feels. I'm going, what? <laughs> what? What kind of insecurity is that? What kind of punishment is that for her being sexual? But the main thing is, most men still have unresolved mommy issues where we want mommy to love us, only us, pick us over daddy, over our siblings, and never to have loved anybody before she met us and loved us. That's just friggin' insecurity. But mm -hmm. men will project that onto women. Oh, I, that's the whole virgin thing. I just don't want you to ever have any desire or love for any other man before you met me, because I'm afraid if you ever did or ever will, I won't be enough for you. And the, yeah, the truth yeah. is... It's a type of control and owning, trying to own someone. It, it is. Well, and that's what monogamy kind of is. I, I own yeah. you. I own your I own your genitalia, your, your sexuality. I control it. I, I'm the boss of it. Whether you're a man or a woman, it's the same thing towards the other. And that's why I'm not a big fan of kind of this ownership model of sexuality. I don't own my yeah. wife. I tell her all the time, you belong to me and you're free. Now, when I say you belong to me, it means I'm here. I'm going to be here for you. You know, you're my wife. We're in this together. We're growing together and you're free. She has freedom to live her life on whatever terms she wants. And I know she's not going to leave me. Why would she leave me? There's no mm -hmm. reason to leave me. And by saying you're free, she can live her life in whatever she, way she wants. She goes to dance class almost every night a week. She was out till two in the morning last night at a dance social. I don't worry because she also tells me the truth. She tells me the truth of, you know, who she's attracted to, who she danced with, you know, whether she saw a woman she was attracted to, a man she was attracted to. She tells me the truth because she there's no reason not to. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of turns me on. It doesn't make me feel like, oh, no, if she was attracted to somebody else, she's going to leave me. She's not going to leave me. I, I, right. I have no doubt. About That's it. why she wants to have sex with you two or three times a day. That's exactly. a good sign. That's how it, you know. A, yeah, because <laughs> she knows she's mine and she knows she's free. Yeah. yeah. She tells her yeah. girlfriends that she'll tell her girlfriends. Yeah. Robert says I'm his, but I'm free. And the girlfriends all go, Oh, you are so lucky. I wish my <laughs> man would say I'm his because women want to be claimed by their man, yeah. but, but not in the ownership. Your mind, I can tell you what to do and control you. They want to be claimed, have their hearts claimed. You're, you, you are that is special for me. You're mine. And they also want to know they're free that they haven't had to give up any part of themselves to be loved by this man. Right. Or to be controlled or owned. You know, the whole thing about the kids that bothers me too, because we've had, we had a foster kid live with us for a while and we had exchange students and, um, you know, my husband is remarried. There are, st uh, st you know, she has kids from her other marriage and he just included them in his life. They're all part of his life. Like bring them into the fold, you know, it was always yeah. how we looked at kids. Cause yeah. we don't own kids. We have an opportunity to have a relationship with these people. So I don't get the whole, I don't want to raise someone that's not my flesh and blood. Like that's just so weird to me. Yeah. You know, cause here's the thing. Going back to the tribal times, you know, where, where most of the red pill likes to, you know, think they, they got their stuff from. In tribal times, the the ch nobody owned a kid. Nobody knew who, there was no paternity, right? Right. Because if the women all had, you know, everybody's sperm, you know, competing inside of them, they just got the strongest sperm and that led to the, the, the healthiest children, I, I guess, ideally. But then the tribe raised the children. And right. all the women took care of the kids when they're little. All the men came and took the boys at about 12 and took them out, initiate them into masculinity. And then the boys hung out with all the men. No man had to be the father of one child. And and that was that was Mother Nature's way for a million and a half years. So it must have worked fairly well. It wasn't until we settled down and started owning stuff, plot of land, a goat, a tree, a vagina, the children that came out of the vagina, started owning things. Now, so we got worried about, oh, I only have so much corn to feed my kids. I better not be passing on the genes of some other, you know, dude that stuck his dick in my woman. You know, I, again, there's probably some truth to that. You know, once we became more of a patriarchal society rather than a tribal society, 
But the emotional residue of that today, where we're still got to control women's sexuality, slut shame them, men are still insecure, that you might have liked some other penis more than theirs, or you might have had more orgasms with some other man. You might have even squirted with some other man, and you haven't squirted with him. Men just get all little boyish about that. Like, I'm I'm, I'm not good enough for mommy to only want and love me and me. You it's know, just, it's yeah, crazy. that makes no sense, because to me, you know, uh, I think I probably speak for most women. It's the man, how we feel about the man. That's the main thing. Yeah. It's not really the size of his penis or frankly, for me, the orgasm. It's like how I feel about that guy. Yeah. Um, so men are very, way too insecure about their whole sexual thing. I think. They should, <laughs> well, you, um, you, 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 you've made a study of it. And my experience it says exactly the same thing. We men are really insecure. And and it's insecurity that makes us want to go get that high quality woman. I, I want to go get the high quality woman because that makes me feel like I'm something. The guys will, you know, envy me and hit on my woman all the time. And I'll worry about her cheating on me. But somehow I think I'm going to have a better life because I got the high quality woman. And And then when she doesn't treat us well, we're mad at all women. So, yes, we men do have to grow up. We Mainly the problem I see it is that we men have not initiated the younger men into the scary world of the masculine. So now all they have to go on is they either stay stuck in being kind of a mommy's boy, seeking some mommy to love them, and then they're angry when mommy doesn't love them perfectly, and and or they get attracted to all this negative stuff that's just hating on everybody. So I think what's missing is, is uh, healthy men initiating younger men into the scary world of the masculine and teaching them how to penetrate the world, how to penetrate a woman, how to live life on your terms. And because here's the funny thing. Well, I found when men live life on their terms, that's highly sexy and highly attractive to women. Women love a man with purpose. Man, women love a man who has confidence about him. They want to be with that guy. And, and I'm sure you, you know, you've had them. Why do I feel that with that guy? Well, it's a sense of confidence, a sense of purpose. He knows where he's at. Yeah, but those not... guys are hard to find. Um, of course yeah. they are. Of course they are. They are hard to find. That's my job is to make them easier to find for women. Yeah, and that's why I have this channel. I'm like, if more guys would just kind of step it up and get with the fucking program, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe I could find someone to date. But I don't know how much time you have left, but I wanted to get um, – uh, you know, I wanted to get some tips for single men where they can meet women or where women can meet men that's not online, but also tips for married men to keep the woman interested, especially if she lost in her libido after menopause or whatever, how to bring some passion back into the relationship or any tips you have for the well, single that's, people that's, that's, and that's the probably, married people. That's probably two more interviews in those oh, two okay. topics right there. <laughs> okay. um, so, um, One of the, because I'll go back to something you said. You said that you're know, so hard to find that kind of man that's purposeful, that's on track. I, I kind of the, the the message I give men: build your great cake of a life. What you know, that's having good guy friends. You know, leaning into to fear. You know, get to the gym regularly. Take good care of yourself, and and then let a great woman be the icing on top of that great cake. A woman's never going to be the cake. If a man tries to turn a woman into his great cake of a life, she will soon lose interest and probably treat him badly, probably leave him. And so I think, where do you find these men? That's what I've really been trying to do. Not so much to give women better men to pick from, but that's actually been part of, of you know, my mission. I, I, I've been a marriage therapist. I started doing marriage therapy 40 something years ago. I've listened to women talk about what's missing in their relationships, what's missing in their man. And really what it keeps coming down to is, is they don't want the, the asshole jerk that treats them bad. They don't want the wussy doormat that lets them walk on them. They want a confident, powerful man that knows what he wants in life, knows where he's going, can set the tone and lead with her without being controlling about it, who, who can you know just bless her life. And so many women tell me, where do you find those men? Can I come stand outside in your parking lot? You know, your workshops, will you put up a website? And I, I'd kind of been saying for a while, 
I, I've got uh, a great, I got one, one grandchild, a 17 year old granddaughter. And um, she's just, she's just a dear. I, I, I love this girl. She's so smart. Um, at two, three years old, she understood figure of speech, analogy, reverse psychology. I remember when I, I go visit her every year for her birthday. And I remember one year we're sitting in a hot tub together in this hotel that I stayed in when I went to visit her. And she was like seven or eight. And, and she's talking about um, talking about evolution and, and, and the evolution of the species. And, and then the next year I go to visit her and she's talking about the expanding universe. I'm going, do you watch Cosmos? And she goes, yeah. Kind of like, doesn't everybody watch Cosmos? <laughs> and so she's so, she's so bright. Um, she plays sports. My, she, my son is, is her custodial parent and he's a wildlife biologist. So he's always out in the woods and he, right now he's running an orchard at a university. And, and so I've got pictures of my granddaughter holding snakes, you know, happy as a clam and she loves animals and pets. She's just, you know, she's, she's smart. I asked her one time, he's the smartest person in your class. She goes, oh no, she named some other boy. He's, he's, he's the smartest because he can keyboard. I go, okay. I go, are you the second smartest? Probably. So like, she's <laughs> smart enough to know how smart she is. Right. And, and I thought, okay, this young woman should be 18 in October. I, you know, I've, I've thought for a while, she is going to need a strong man. Her father's a strong man. He's, he's a, a vet of, of, of the Marines. He went, he went to Iraq right out of high school has a, a master's degree in wildlife ecology. He's owned his own business. He, he's, you know, he's kind of, kind of a man's man, but the best father I've ever seen, he used to get down on a knee and explain to her why we didn't do X, Y, or Z, you know, just mm -hmm. no scolding, just talking to her. So she had a strong father. She's always been spent time with me. She, she has a strong grandfather. She, she told me one time, this is about three or four years ago on her birthday. She said, grandpa, in my computer class, we were all looking up our grandparents on, in a computer class. She goes, I've got the most famous grandfather. I go, do you really? She goes, yeah, nobody else's grandfather's written books and been on all, all these YouTube interviews and podcasts. And she goes, and you know what? I was also voted as having the sexiest grandfather. I go, really? <laughs> and I go, did you see that picture? And she goes, uh-huh. There's a picture of me when I was in really good shape back in my late 40s, just a pair of jeans on with no shirt that I actually taken. And I think I sent it to a girlfriend. It's not risque. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lean and, and strong. And somehow that got on the Internet and it's still on the Internet. So my, my granddaughter's friend said, your grandfather is the sexiest grandfather. So <laughs> one of my intentions was I want to create strong, healthy young men that give my granddaughter a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. That's mm -hmm. been a goal I've had. Last year, actually it was on her 16th birthday. Went to visit on her birthday. She's about to go to the homecoming dance after, you know, homecoming football game. And she says, Grandpa, the boy that's taken me to the homecoming dance, his parents are reading your book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. And I said, mission accomplished. <laughs> that when the parents of the boys who are asking my granddaughter out have read my book, I'm, I'm, I'm making a difference in the world. And so I, I love men. I really want men to be their best. I don't want them to be bitter. I don't want them to be victims. I don't want them to be, you know, just projecting all this venom out on anybody, and especially women. You know, most of the people in Red Pill are married and have daughters. That's what's so, so surprising at times. Mm -hmm. And I think if men feel empowered, we will have a healthier vision of what a good woman, what a true high quality woman can do to bless our life. We don't expect them to come fix everything. We don't expect them to be the good mommy that loves us you know, in the ways our mommy didn't. We don't expect them. We, we let go of those crazy expectations. And because we're living a good life. When, when I was dating in my 40s and 50s, I would often tell women, I said, if we keep dating, here's what you can expect from me. I said, I will be conscious. I'll pay attention to you, to me, to us, what's going on. I'll set the tone and take the lead. You know, I won't ever ask you, what do you want to do? I, I will, um, I'll be transparent. You'll, you'll know what I feel, what I want. I'll tell you the truth. I'll, I'll, I'll never lie to you. And the women all go, whoa, I've never had a man say that. And the women would say that if they're a good woman. They said, what do you expect of me? I said, you know what? I got a good life. I got a good job. I got good guy friends. 
I enjoy my life. I travel. I said, treat me well and make my world beautiful. And then their eyes would kind of cut like that when they're creative <laughs> thinking mode. Hmm. Treat him well, make his world beautiful. I'm in. You know, <laughs> if a guy is living that kind of great cake of a life, there's a lot of great women out there that want to come along, be that icing on top, treat him well, make his world beautiful. And But the guy, it starts with the guy living that kind of life and then inviting a true high quality woman to come treat him well and make his world beautiful. So I'll wrap it with that. How's that? Yeah, thank you so much. That's really that's really good advice for the guys because then women will flock to them. They do. Naturally. Naturally. No pickup lines, no no hypnosis, no NLP, no big feathers in your, your hat. Women are attracted to a man who's comfortable in his own skin, knows where he's going, and looks like he's having a good time getting there. Women and we see notice. we see that in their energy, like we we feel that in an yeah. instant. Yeah, so that's good advice for the guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the um, invitation. I always I always get a kick out of having these conversations with you. I hope they're helpful. I hope that they're helping men and women both get out of that mode of being a victim to anything or anybody or a victim to their own minds and beginning to live a life that on their terms, that's fulfilling, that's satisfying, and that blesses the people around them as well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Glover.